Good morning, folks. Let's begin with some pre-flare destabilizing features. Before the X-Class solar flares a few days ago, a small eruption paved the way for the instability to take hold. This is something we often see. Subtle shifts near an active region just before an eruption. We saw the same thing happen yesterday where the coronal plasma near the departing delta spots began wavering and resulted in both active regions lighting up a long duration flare. We'll discuss it again in a bit but which released a fairly good-sized coronal mass ejection. Most is going south and will miss Earth, but there is a small chance that the burst was wide enough to give us a tiny glancing blow of a CME. I'd be able to tell you with more certainty, but, as with all large CMEs and sun-diving comets, yep, frames are cut out every time without fail. I actually emailed Soho earlier this week on this, and the response was that there is no lag or loss of pictures. They don't know what I'm talking about. Do you, George? Methinks you do. Interesting real-world example of what we've begun to learn this year. The solar events affect our lower atmosphere far more than current climate science accounts for. Thank Gatherer for this find. Skewing topics a bit because this is too cool to ignore. A mega skull of prehistoric elephant was found in New Mexico. And boom goes the dynamite. Speaking of boom, the top nonsense in the climate world is getting even loonier. Death Professor versus the annoying gnat and about that appears as useful to climate science as the failed IPCC reports. But it does bring up a solid point about precedent. Simply put, if Michael Mann wins, the days of blindly calling people climate deniers or accusing them of being bought by oil with no evidence whatsoever is over. For those new here, Climate change is very real, however the science isn't exact, we don't have all the facts or factors at play, and we're going on 20 plus years of failed projections. This is causing attacks back and forth from both sides, and a lack of caring from the public. I like the aforementioned precedent because when I try to keep focus on climate change and point out a few of the mistakes that were made, I'm somehow called a climate denier and an oil boy, despite my shots taken at both sides and in support of climate change science. So keep calling me an oil boy, you better be able to prove it. Not so coincidentally, we're heading to the May climate report, just released. I've got the links for you below, but we'll run through some of the basics here. Just looking at May 2014, we see a mix of warm and cold, with the precipitation anomalies offering a bit more interesting of a map for the last month. Looking at the last six months really reveals the cold wave that took over and should be about to give way to El Nino heat. Your six month precipitation anomalies here. Lastly, we have the last 365 days, a full year. Climate extremes, both hot and cold, but also flood and drought. The shifts will hasten and intensify. So our quake watch is taking its sweet old time. I've perhaps been spoiled by these fast ramps this year, but this one is slow as can be. Just a moderate uptick overnight in this region. Greece above average and also one in Pakistan. Neither one should cause damage, but the latter is interesting because it's on a line with a new track of the Arabian Sea storm. Good news for Oman and the Uyen seismic points, not so good for Karachi, Pakistan. Hurricane Christina hit Category 4 overnight, but this morning it's weakening down to Category 2 and still set to stay off the coastline. Let's look at tonight's U.S. storm zone. The low and high pressure cells are well north, but we're eyeing the strong point in the convergence where air masses collide from different points of temperature, moisture, pressure, and electric potential. They're going to fire there tonight. Coming down under where the lows spin clockwise and draw convergences to the north along the leading east edge. We should have a heavy precipitation day along that arch. Solar wind is calm, still awaiting CME impact for now. Solar flaring hasn't matched the X flares from a few days ago, but that long duration flare we mentioned indeed was enough to ramp the polar radiation slightly, not even to storm level 1 however. The departing sunspots are enormous, delta and firing, but heading out of sight so we'll come center disk, where that new group is staying small, maintains beta delta class, sun series watchers trivia, why is she not gamma? The incoming spots that produce the X flares are smaller than the departing spots on the south, but their central delta is a monster, may even have some backup to his north. Either way, we could see flaring from three separate points on our star today, something to watch. Also of note, the corona hold down south, negative facing earth, dropped a bit of force overnight. We'll watch for a re-ramp. Folks, tomorrow is the start of the Mobile Observatory project. We're in Dayton, Ohio at the Boonshoff Museum of Discovery first thing in the morning. You can find all the info at observatoryproject.com. 
Shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.